2024 has been a big election year and we have maybe the biggest one or we have the biggest one coming up. How would you set the frame of what's ahead of us the next couple of weeks? US state of it and the election. What are your thoughts? So the U election is very interesting. It's going to be what they have called a uh, turnout election because it's going to be on the day how many people is actually going to go in the boots and uh, in the, into the polls and actually uh, vote. Uh, but, but more importantly, probably said in the scene, it's very important to understand that we sort of think there are seven swing states of which four is pretty much given. Three of them is going to go to Trump and one of them is going to go to Harris, which means that by Tuesday, we are really only contesting. Sorry, three of them are given uh, and, and four of them are, are still open. So we are really only fighting on four different in four different states. And the key here is that Pennsylvania, which is in play, is 19 electoral votes. And in order to win the presidential election, you Funny enough, it's not, uh, it's not needed that you actually have the most votes, but what is important is that you get 270 uh, electoral votes. And uh, Pennsylvania is 19, so they're critical for both of them. So basically, you know, making a long story short, whoever gets Pennsylvania will be very difficult to knock off on the final day. I predict that uh, the, uh, the Pennsylvania probably goes to Harris, which means he's still not certain. So actually, in mathematical terms, Trump is rightly put as a favorite, because if you run all of the iteration of four different states and how it can turn out, he has sort of a 60-40 advantage. But having said that, it is the turnout. It is, especially in my opinion, the uh, women coming out and actually voting. There is a huge uh, positive score for Harris on 17 percentage points on young uh, females. Similarly, actually, uh, Trump has a, like a 14, 15% advantage with young men. The difference is the young women is going to go vote. Not all of the P, uh, young men is going to vote. We know that from, from history. So my call is actually, and this is probably the worst scenario for the market, is that Harris takes it with 206, 270 votes against 268, which means he wins by two votes in the Electoral College. And you can easily imagine what that would do. And, and putting additional spin and context to this, uh, I hear from Americans that Trump is already celebrating. They are already uh, saying that it's going to be a landslide, it's going to be a bloodbath, uh, you know, we're going to wipe the floor with the, with the Democrats. Of course, that is you know, probably not the case, but they are so confident that what they are leading into, in my opinion, is that if they lose, the reaction would immediately be the election was stolen, cheating, whatever. Also, because on a personal level, Trump goes to court less than three weeks after and is very likely to lose that court case. So he's not only fighting for his political life, he's also fighting for his, so to speak, legal uh, life. So the election uh, overall uh, is driven by immigration, is driven by purchasing power of your, of your, of your purse, your salary. And, uh, and, and, and abortion. That, th those are the three items. But on the day, I think it's, it's probably going to be down to 30,000 votes or something uh, at the end of the day. So very, very tight. That's going to be extremely interesting. So one common question is, of course, given who wins it, what will change in terms of markets, etc. But another way of looking at it, sort of like the, the Jeff Bezos way of looking at it, is saying what will not change regardless of what happens. What do we know for a fact will happen regardless of who wins the election. And I'm just thinking the way you have studied the US economy with the debt, with keeping markets art artificially high, raising a middle class again, all of these things will stand, I guess, regardless of who takes it. So what is like the future in US regardless of who wins the election? You're absolutely right. And it's kind of interesting, both your question melts into one because the number one thing that will not change is the fiscal dominance that we see from the US government which now, unfortunately, is supported by uh, the Federal Reserve, who no longer can deem themselves to be an independent central bank. But let's come back to that later. But what is absolutely clear, if you look at the uh, CBO, the, uh, the, uh, the Congress uh, Budget Office, which is an independent unit, they don't foresee any deficit smaller than 5% of GDP for the next uh, 20 years. 
And uh, they do that with a very high uh, actual uh, real uh, growth in the economy. It's very likely we will you know, sometimes be better than that, but it's also like there will be worse. So these sort of outlooks are very, very dire. And as we go into this election, I think it's super interesting that the market is already, and when I talk about the market here, I'm talking about the bond market, is already in a buying strike. They've refused to do it. And why do we know this? We know this because when Federal Reserve lowered interest rate by 50 basis point at the last FOMC meeting, the market came back to Powell and the FOMC and said, listen, you can cut the interest rates as much as you want. That's your prerogative in the short end. But we are not going to accept uh, anything in the long end of the curve unless you give us a higher compensation. So right now, Federal Reserve looks a little bit out of tune because, of course, they lowered 50 basis points, but the long end is up 60, 70 basis points, and so is the short end. So the market is actually already you know, staging what I call the mini Liz Trust moment. Of course, famously, Liz Trust was prime minister in the UK, came out with a budget that was unsupported by any uh, uh, income, uh, any taxes, and, and the market went haywire. We are not there yet, but we are definitely in a prolonged bias strike, which whoever becomes president will be extended into the new year. That also, in my opinion, sets up what's going to be not only the trade in Q3 and Q4 of this year, but potentially for a couple of years, that if you think about the assets available for you as an investor, you traditionally, in all the time I've been around, and unfortunately that's a long time, uh, bond has sort of been a safe, uh, safe haven instrument. It's been an instrument which was sort of countering the risk you're taking in equity and private equity and whatever uh, commodity you were involved with. Now, no one wants it. Everyone's going to shy away from it because the market says, listen, this is what we call a denominator game. So if you think about an equation, you have on the top part, you have what is growing at, uh, at, at the rate of the economy, we, the normal growth of the economy, and below you have uh, the debt uh, on it. And here, in order to stay away from the debt as an asset uh, allocator or an investor, you are buying what? You're buying gold, you're buying silver, you're buying crypto. And to some extent, you deem and, and, and accept that the equity is semi non-fiat. So fiat, the concept that you can issue money as a central bank with no collateral behind it, that is falling by the wayside. And that is being extended in sort of magnitude to, to impact because the global south, the non-Western economies, they are basically uh, buying gold, trying to set up an alternative funding currency that can be used by these non-Western players. So the tectonic plates, although they look very slow moving from sort of the from 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 10,000 feet, are moving pretty pretty dramatically in terms of what goes on. So what is very likely to inevitably happen is, as you say yourself, is that the fiscal constraints or the fiscal dominance will continue, and at the same time, we're probably going to have ultimately people start challenging the concept of a strong dollar mm -hmm. because why is the dollar strong right now right here because the u.s sucks takes out all the liquidity for the rest of the world i don't know a single investor globally who is not long the u.s stock market you know most families the big sevens but so think about they, they they sort of take all the excess capital available the total amount of capital available to the world is smaller but the u.s take a bigger part that strengthens the dollar artificially in the short term, but ultimately the investor would want either higher rates mm. or weaker dollar. I think they're going to get you know, a little bit higher rates, but definitely a lower dollar in 25.